2022 Nissan Sentra SR Midnight Edition. Is this cool looking, well equipped compact sedan better than its closest rivals, the Civic and the Corolla? Let's find out. <laughs> Starting with the exterior design of this Midnight Edition Sentra, we have black accents that contrast with the white paint color. We have 18 inch, five spoke, glossy black wheels that look pretty good. They're the largest wheels you can get on this Sentra. Uh, you also have a darkened V-Motion grille up front. You also have a darkened Nissan emblem. You also have a good looking exhaust tip on the back, which I wasn't expecting for the Sentra with a CVT, so that's pretty cool. We also have a lighting package on the Sentra SR Midnight Grade that gives the body underglow. I'm not kidding, we have underglow on the Sentra and it definitely takes me back to my middle school days playing Need for Speed Underground. But some people might mistake the Sentra for the Ultima and I don't think that's a bad thing because I do like the Ultima's design and looks. It's just not going to stand out from the crowd. Nissan is selling over 100,000 of these Sentras per year again. Uh, not quite as strong as the 200,000 plus sales from the, the 2010s and the 80s when this vehicle was just selling like hotcakes. It's, it's in a different market now with the, the realm of crossovers and it even competes uh, with the Nissan Kicks in that regard. And I'm getting hard on the brakes here. You can talk about the driving mechanics now. The brakes are okay. They're fairly linear. I don't feel the CVT cutting in and, and messing with the, the predictability of the brake pedal. They're pretty average. The handling of this vehicle, even though we have an independent rear suspension, it doesn't inspire by any means, even with these 18 inch wheels. They, they look the part, but they, it, this vehicle does have a good amount of body roll in the corners. But since I'm stopped at a red light here, I'm gonna wait to talk about the engine and transmission. I'm gonna talk about the interior and this SR grade has the premium package and this thing is loaded up. I got heated uh, seats up front. I also have a heated steering wheel. These seats are synthetic leather, which is interesting because if you go down to the SV grade, you get these really nice quilted tan seats that remind me of the platinum grade of the Nissan Rogue. We also have a really nice stitched leather steering wheel with a flat bottom. <laughs> it always catches me off guard when I'm throwing this in the turns that it has a flat bottom steering wheel, but uh, we have orange contrast stitching with the black. So I get a little bit of a, a Halloween vibe here, not only with the stitching on the steering wheel, but across the dash around the center console here. And it's even on the shift boot. The shifter is decent enough. I mean, it's leather wrapped in this grade. The, the issue I have with it, it's so easy to sling it into low instead of drive when you're bringing it out of reverse or park. Now there's also a button on the shifter that puts it into a sport mode. So uh, we got a green arrow here. I'm not gonna be able to push it too hard, but I might be able to ring out this two liter with around 150 horsepower naturally aspirated made to the CVT. <laughs> if this RX350 gives me a chance, I'm gonna go ahead and punch it here in sport mode. And it goes to about 6,000 RPM and shifts like a traditional automatic transmission when you're pushing it. And that's something I wasn't necessarily expecting either. So many times in CVTs, it'll just, you know, rev to around 5,000 RPM or so and just hold that, you know, to get the peak torque and peak horsepower happy medium. But this vehicle actually <laughs> simulates gears pretty well for a CVT. I wasn't expecting that. Now this does have an eight speaker Bose sound system, which sounds pretty good. It sounds comparable to the Honda Civic SI that I just got out of, which has more speakers in its Bose setup. But to me, they sound pretty similar. We also have a sunroof that brings in additional light. We have a larger touchscreen compared to the base model of the Sentra. You can see I've had Android Auto up on the screen the whole time. We have a USB-C here, a USB-A up front. We also have a USB in the back that's currently powering my drive cam. So that's pretty cool. I mean, we didn't have that on the Civic Si that I just drove last week. So I, I appreciate that additional USB back there. The back seat quality is actually pretty decent. You have a good amount of leg room. You only have one mat pocket back there. I don't know why manufacturers can't give us two mat pockets. I guess it might save them a dollar or something per car, but out of sport mode, I'm just gonna hammer it. And it, it, it really likes to creep up that rev range like, it, like it's holding an actual gear, even when you're not in sport mode. When you're just trolling around in traffic, keeping up with traffic, you don't really pay attention to the engine transmission. It actually does a good job, even with just 150 horsepower, just keeping up with normal traffic and getting really good fuel economy. 
The touchscreen is excellent. It's not quite as high as resolution as what we see in, in more expensive Nissan products like the Rogue Platinum I drove. And the, the Android Auto is easy to get to. It's not wireless, by the way, but that's okay. I do love that we have a tuning knob and volume knob. They're really easy to get to. I do also have volume here on the steering wheel, but having a quick adjust for the volume right here on the knob is my preferred way of using the volume. Between the two physical gauges for your tachometer and speedometer, we have a, a nice digital MID that gives us plenty of information, radio stations. It's also gonna tell you digital speedometer, miles per gallon, which I just leave it on there. Now in terms of safety features, this is pretty well equipped. I have blind spot monitor. I have radar cruise control, which works pretty well. We'll test it out here on the interstate in a little bit. It does not have lane keep. So it does have lane departure alert where it vibrates the steering wheel. It's quite rare to have three vents in the middle of the vehicle for a vehicle of this size in this class. So I really appreciate the additional airflow I can send my way. I can also turn off the air airflow by adjusting or spinning the, the center knob on the, on the vent. And we also have climate control knobs with the dual climate control. Everything in, in this vehicle is very, very functional. And I feel really comfortable getting on the brakes hard here again. Kind of hard to predict. It gets the vehicle stopped pretty well, but it does feel like it's trying hard. You do have a little bit of nosedive going in as well. Flooring it at a green light. Okay. 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 <laughs> it, do it does not get anywhere particularly quick. Now that wasn't in sport mode, but most of the time you guys probably wouldn't be keeping it in sport mode. But I'm gonna put it back in sport mode and immediately felt like it downshifted. And we're gonna merge onto the freeway here. I'm gonna take this, I'm at like 45, just to sling it into the turn. Yep, <laughs> good amount of body roll, but it held true. No squealing of the tires or anything like that. P pedal to the metal here, there's 70. There's 75, there's 80. And it's pretty buzzy, but it's not obnox obnoxiously loud, um, at least when, when you have the pedal down. So I'm out here on the interstate going 75, and road noise is definitely a thing with these 18 inch tires. Now I wish this vehicle did have lane keep as well as the lane departure alert. Um, here on the highway, it just gives you a little bit more relaxation. You don't have to focus as much to keep the, the vehicle within the lines. Um, but last week, the Civic Si had about 82 decibels going 75 miles an hour, and I thought that was pretty loud. But I'm gonna be quiet here. And we're averaging, I would say, around 85 decibels. So it's even louder than the Civic Si was at 75 miles an hour. So in 2020, this Sentra came out as an eighth generation of 2022. Very little changes have come to it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. They hit the exterior styling. I think it looks really good from the outside, as good as it needs to to keep up in the class. The interior amenities for the price point are really, really good. The interior quality, I believe, is, is excellent. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like the doors in here are soft touch and feel much higher quality than the, the more expensive Civic Si that I was in yesterday. <laughs> I took the Civic Si around this the other day and it was a totally different experience around that turn. <laughs> Anyways, at $27,600 plus for this midnight edition, is it worth it? I would say it's it's not a bad deal, but you can get a better bang for your buck on the SV grade where it brings in uh, the actual leather seats that are, are quilted. They kind of remind me of the Platinum Edition of the Nissan Rogue. You're still gonna have the climate control amenities like the heated seats and the heated steering wheel and the SV grade. You still get the sunroof. You don't get the 360 camera, which is not a very good quality. Oh, look at the old ZZR. 1200. To be honest, the biggest attraction to the SR grade might be the sound system and I could live without that. So try not to spend more than 25K on the center would be my recommendations, but I need to end the, end the review here. Good looks, well-appointed interior, pretty high quality materials in here and and a pretty responsive CVT, even though it's not that inspiring. Uh, the Sentra is going to sell like hotcakes, especially if you can get it for under 25K. I think that 
and the SV grade is the way to go. What additional questions might you have about the Sentra? Put them down below. If you enjoyed today's video, uh, definitely hit the like button and subscribe for more Nissan content. I will be giving you more. I'll check you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, peace out. Mm -hmm.